Vikes now, I am Dustin Baker. We are off and running for the 2023 season, officially, because we have a depth chart, an unofficial depth chart, so I guess it's not officially, and a lot of times these Vikings depth charts just feel like the experienced guys being at the top, while the young ones still have to work their way up. But nevertheless, there are some surprises, eight of them by my calculation. I'm sure there's a couple more if you want to get down to the nitty gritty. But I want to unveil those uh, unveil those for you right now. And they won't be in order. They're just uh, kind of as I observed them and jotted them down to get this out quick to the masses. So you can go check it out uh, on Vikings.com. They've got their iteration of an unofficial depth chart. And here's what you'll find in my estimation that can be considered surprising. The first item is that Cameron Bynum is the starting free safety. <clears throat> this man played every single defensive snap for the 2022 Vikings, but this is also a depth chart that has Lewis Seen on it, a first rounder from the 2022 NFL draft, and Josh Metellist and newcomer Jay Ward. So there are, it will continue to be. Uh, there, there's some debate as to who ends up winning the free safety job or ends up getting the most snaps by the time the 2023 season is kaput. But right now, heading into the preseason and at the Vikings rest starters, that would be Cameron Bynum at free safety next to Harrison Smith. Now, I think we all want Lewisine to emerge because it will make the draft pick look righteous and, you know, worthwhile. But for now, he's going to have to wait a little bit longer. And I think I've mentioned, along with Josh Fry on the show several times, that the way that Brian Flores' defense is deployed, there might just be, you know, a, a plethora of free safeties running all over the place. So who knows what the snap count will be for the position opposite Harrison Smith when the season's over. But for right now, it's Bynum starting at free safety, not Metellus and not seen. Next, arguably the biggest news, uh, starting to settle the uh, offseason long debate, Q, uh, CB2, excuse me, the other starting cornerback CB job goes to a Caleb Evans. Jawan Williams ran with the first teamers in the first week of training camp, but I guess regressed back to the second team. And voila, Caleb Evans, who played a substantial amount as a rookie last year. He was the guy that Kwesi scouted at night in the dark with the lights off. Uh, Caleb Evans is the CB2 next to Byron Murphy to start uh, the preseason anyhow. And there was a lot of debate because the Vikings said goodbye to so many cornerbacks. Patrick Peterson, Cameron Dantzler, Duke Shelley, Chris Boyd, Chandon Sullivan. That well, who They're losing everybody. Who in the hell is going to be the CB2? Well... Right now, it's a Caleb Evans. He has shoved Andrew Booth to the bottom, and then also Jawan Williams, who felt like he had a prayer to perhaps be the CB2. But this one is noteworthy because it very vividly says on the Vikings depth chart, starters, Byron Murphy, a Caleb Evans. And it wasn't like interpretive. Uh, the other guys were listed as reserves. The next, and I don't think this is a big surprise, so forgive me if this is not a surprise to you, but K.J. Osborne is listed as the other starting receiver with Justin Jefferson. Just like the scene argument from a few minutes ago, Jordan Addison should win this job. He better before too long, whether that's week eight of the 2023 season or next year. Jordan Addison will be the WR2 of the Vikings. That's just all there is to it. But for now, that's K.J. Osborne, who enters a contract year. And this one kind of felt like fruition. Addison had the huge hiccup with the reckless uh, driving charge. The world was down on him for a few days, but he apologized back on track. And he looks wonderful at training camp. Uh, but he, for now, heading into the preseason game Thursday night, 9 p.m. Central Time against CLC Hawks, K.J. Osborne is WR2, not Jordan Addison. And by the way, the Vikings structured the depth chart. It almost looked like Jalen Naylor was the WR3, uh, not Addison. Uh, next is Kane Iwangu. This is probably the most surprising to me on the way that they ordered the depth chart is the RB2, at least for now. Alexander Madison took over as RB1 because Dalvin Cook was released on June 9th. And it's not going to be Ty Chandler right away or Dwayne McBride or that new XFL dude, Abram Smith. It's Kane Nwongu, the speedy one. The guy who kicks, all he does is return kick returns for touchdowns. Kane Nwongu will start RB2, which means in Seattle on Thursday night, you should, I think, see him take the first handoff from the Vikings offense. Probably from Nick Mullins would be my guess. Is the the super speedy Kane Nwongu is the, w, uh, the RB2, excuse me. Speaking of Chandler, this one was just kind of a nugget, a little bit of a surprise. On the kick returning duty, Ty Chandler is listed as the backup to Kane Nwangu. So in theory, if Kane Nwangu was hurt or I guess for some reason got cut here in three weeks, the kick returner appears like it would be Ty Chandler, who is fast, but not as fast as Kane. And a couple other things, uh, I'll put these into one category, although I guess they're part of eight as the, the eight surprises, is Josh Sokol, 
a reserve a center in years past for the Vikings last year, is now a guard. All of a sudden, they've plopped him in the guard category. I didn't know that was a thing. I had to you know, look at it a couple of times to make sure it was right. But the Vikings have pretty skimpy and skinny guard depth. So for now, it looks like Josh Sokol, who is usually a center, is going to play guard. And take everything I just said and flip that over to Blake Brandle. Now, this dude has been a tackle for sure on the depth chart for a long, relatively long time for the Vikings. But... You know, they're not signing Dalton Reisner as of yet. No Andrew Norwell. Nothing fun like that. They have converted, evidently, on the depth chart, Blake Brandle to a guard. And usually he's, you know, in ink. Whether it's a practice squad or on the regular roster, usually he is a tackle. But they have grander plans for Sokol and Brandle, plopping them at guard. I don't know if they signed Reisner, if they'd flip Brandle back to tackle, we shall see. But that is the takeaway. The two switches on the depth chart, by my estimation, are uh, previously center Sokol and tackle Brandle are now offensive guards. Who'd have thunk it? And finally, there is no initial depth chart love for the big UDFAs, Ivan Pace Jr., off-ball linebacker, and Andre Carter the second, who was just getting off the, I believe it was the pup list, the edge rusher. Now, uh, Pace especially has taken training camp by storm, and if there was such thing as real Mr. Mankato voting, uh, not just something in spirit that we say every offseason, Ivan Pace, in my opinion, would be Mr. Mankato because he started the first week second-teamers, graduated up to the first teamers. Uh, but on the depth chart, he's buried in the sense he's listed, listed as the weak side linebacker. And I think he's in the third hole behind Jordan Hicks and Troy Reader. Then Pace is on there. But the way that they're doing things down in Egan, it sure looks like Pace is a lot higher on the depth chart than that. And that's why I'll, I'll rest on the laurels of when they when they release this, which is usually about three or four days before the preseason it does seem like it's just a lifetime achievement depth chart, and then things will heat up throughout the preseason. But for now, uh, Carter is understandable because he hasn't really done anything in the training camp, and he's you know brand new. I understand why he's buried. Um, but Ivan Pace, it's a little bit weird that he's been running with the ones is still you know underwater on the depth chart. So those are the eight surprises. Let's recap them. Uh, Cameron Bynum for now is the starting free safety. A Caleb Evans is the other starting cornerback. Kane in Wangwu is the RB2, not Ty Chandler, not Jordan Addison at WR2, folks. It's KJ Osborne, at least for now. And then a couple position changes from Josh Sokol from center to guard, Blake Brandle from tackle to guard. Uh, Ty Chandler is the backup kick returner. And although we, me, you, the Vikings, have grand plans for Ivan Pace and Andre Carter, that did not translate to the first unofficial depth chart release. I'll be back tomorrow. I want to go over some probably hot takes for what I'm thinking. Get those out in the stratosphere for the 2023 Viking season. And then on Wednesday, barring some sort of scheduling misfire, we'll have Josh Fry to go to talk about some of the training camp and depth chart release. Probably his biggest surprises from the depth chart release. All right. All we got for Monday and skull, baby.